Hello guys, welcome to Linux Automations. And in this today's video, we are going to talk about Google Cloud Platform and its introduction. So here we are going to talk about how do we create an account in the Google Cloud Platform and how do you launch a VM instance in the Google Cloud Platform. The instance which we are going to launch, so which is a Linux instance, so that's the reason we'll show you how to connect to the Linux instance using SSH case even. So for that, let's start with going into cloud.google.com, so which is the Google Cloud Platform website. So go over there and click on Try it Free. So currently Google is providing you free access to, the, to their services. And you just click on Try it Free. And provide your email address. So and then you just log into your Google account. So once after you log in, so you will find the Google Cloud Platform, the basic terms and conditions. You just click on uh, your country name and terms and ac terms and conditions acceptance. Also, you need to observe that you are going to get around three hundred dollars credit for free of cost. So whenever you sign up for this Google Cloud, you're going to get three hundred dollars, and there is no auto charge after that. So once you click on uh, agree and continue, so it's going to ask you whether you are going to be an individual or business guy. So I'm clicking on individual. I'm going to provide my credit card details over here. It's going to direct one dollar, and that particular dollar is going to revert it back to you. So once you log into the Google platform, so this is the first landing page, so which is going to welcome you. So you can just tour like what are the features you have available over here. So I'm just skipping that particular part. This service which we are going to talk about in our class and in this particular video, so which is uh, Try Compute Engine. This particular compute engine, you just click on uh, getting started. So you will see. Um, so uh, basically, like how do you act? How do you use that? And also, if you observe, it is going to create a project and it's going to give a unique ID for that particular project, whatever it got allocated to you. So first project is going to be my first project. And you click on try compute engine. So it's going to give you the help page, like how to use start using that. You can use that particular one if you have any doubts. Right now, I'm just going to cancel that. After that, I'm going to go to the menu and here I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use uh, compute engine. So you can see a lot of services out there. So I'm going with compute engine and then uh, it's going to get it ready for you compute engine services. So meanwhile, on the left side, you can observe that there are uh, VM instances which are available and you can create your own images. So uh, in case if you don't want to use their images. So right now I'm just going with um, before to starting with, I would like to go and create SSH keys for my complete project. So using those keys, I'm going to use to connect to all my Linux servers. So that's the reason I'm going to use Linux keys. So I'm using JIT bash over here to generate the SSH key or else you can use a Linux native command line you can use SSH keys and command in Linux. So all the things I require is a key pair and the key pair is should be in a Linux or Unix fam format so that only your Google Cloud is going to accept those keys. And I generated the keys over here. So public key and private key, key pair. So I'm going to take the public key and I'm going to share that particular one in the Google, Google Cloud and inside my project. So for my complete project in that particular project, so all my instances is going to use the same key. So I'm just going with metadata option and you have an option over there to add SSH keys for your complete project. So click on SSH keys and then go with add SSH key. And if you remember in EC2, so you are going to have uh, different users for different images. But here it's a different approach. So whatever the username you provide under uh, key, it's going to use the same username for all your instances you launch irrespective of whatever the OS you are using. So you can just see there after adding the key I'm putting as admin modified that key as admin and it is taking the username as admin. So this is really important in Google Cloud. So the key should be in a proper format so that it picks the username from there. And uh, so let's start with how do you create a VM instance. So for that, let's go with clicking on a VM instance. And then from there, we can just go on proceed. Like how do we create instance? 
it's not going to go uh, it, it's not going to show you multiple screens like how do you like 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 in amazon so it's going to be a single web page provide all the details and you're done so just provide the instance name so the instance name should be in lower characters so that's what google is giving you and you have a lot of regions whichever the near region you can go with that and by default you are getting a one cpu and 3.75 gb ram as a default one and also you can see like it's 26 dollars per month and also you have wide variety of instance types available you can just select that one or else you can customize it even whatever the way you want and click on boot disk so i require centos so currently i don't have my own image so i'm just going with os image centos 7 and identity access if you have anything so and also like firewall settings if you would like to enable like allow http and https traffic you can do that and you have certain additional options like auto uh, like startup scripts and also here you can see as i told you the keys which we selected is for complete project you can stop the particular project key and you can add your own key over there so only for this particular instance so click on create it's just going to take a couple of seconds and the instance is ready for you so the instance name i have selected is demo one and it has selected a default region which is central 1c and uh, also uh, it is showing you that okay external ip is not at, not at all allocated yet it's going to allocate once you got the machine is up and running so here you can see you got a private ip and as well as you have external ip for all my connections i'm going to use um, external ip whereas for internal communication i'm going to use internal ips and also you get an option over there to directly go with ssh you can see over there but i'm using jitbash over here so id underscore rsa so whatever the key i have used i'm using that key so it just takes uh, a moment so to get it connected might be the machine is still booting up so that's the reason it's just holding on otherwise it's going to be very fast as you know centos 7 is using system d so which you makes your system booting process really fast and once you enable the connection so it's going to show you uh, the fingerprint key because you're first time connecting ssh fingerprint and you access the accept the fingerprint so you are inside the server and the username if you observe i'm using admin user i'm logged into the user and admin user is even even got the pseudo privileges so you can see the from memory and you can see like how much disk it's being used and so following with that we'll talk about uh, so enable firewall settings so how do you enable or how do you connect that particular instance with different port numbers so by default ssh port is opened already and hence you're able to connect whereas if i would like to open a custom port so you have to go to networking and then um, you just go on firewall rules it's something like your security group in amazon ec2 and here you can see 22 port and uh, 3389 so which is windows ports and icmp port has been enabled and i'm going to create a firewall rule so click on firewall rule and put your name so i'm putting like all traffic allow and then whom i want to allow i want to allow everyone so i'm selecting the ip range and I'm selecting the port range so TCP 0 to 65535 so that means I'm enabling all TCP ports as an inbound service to my project so this this change is going to be for the complete pro complete project and once this particular rule is available so you can connect to the instance so without any issue to any of the particular ports so I would suggest you to open the ports which are all really required but here I am using the complete port opening so it's not a good practice in industry you can just go with enabling whichever the port you want let's go back to our uh, VM instances and here you can see we have our instance ready and that's all we already connected and you install your services and you have everything ready so that's all how do you create an instance over here and uh, thanks for watching my video so please subscribe to my channel have a good day thank you bye